Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. Welcome to Vlog 98. And although this is Vlog 98, I am very happy to announce we have winners for Vlog 100. The winners for the Vlog 100 competition are going to travel with me for a weekend and they'll make footage for my vlog. First of all, thank you so much for your submissions. It was amazing to see your face and I'm so happy you love what I do and I was very impressed. From the various hundreds of submissions, there can only be two winners. Winner number one from the UK, Sam Kinsella. Winner number two from S-Land, it's Martin Gatsky. Congratulations, you guys. I will see you shortly on tour to help me shoot a Vlog 100. A very special episode today. I don't think anyone has ever talked about this online, but what does it actually take to go out of your bedroom and play clubs and play festivals? Because it's not as easy as you may think. I will be explaining all the pros and cons in this vlog. And then at the end, I'll give you the five main things you'll need to keep in mind when coming out of your bedroom. Just arrived out here in LA and it always shocks me how long of a flight it is, but it's so good to be back. I got a warm welcome from Laidback Joe and her son. Joe always brings me some Laidback Luke t-shirts, which I really appreciate. And then just now, Sammy Doom made the welcome even more warm with bringing me some in and out for on the road. And being on the road is exactly what we'll do as we'll go to San Bernardino. I just gotta get changed really quickly. And then I'll ask you some questions which will make you realize how different it is playing outside of your bedroom or outside of your studio. On our way to San Bernardino now, this is like a one and a half hour drive. It's gonna be a busy night. I'm gonna do two shows out here in San Bernardino and then straight out to Vegas tonight. But let me just get back to you on DJing outside of your bedroom. Now, I know for a lot of you, this is a dream, but do you know what it takes though? For instance, do you think a crowd will automatically dance to your music? Should you play the same set everywhere, like on festivals, in clubs, just like in your bedroom. Well, I can tell you one thing already, the energy and the environment is very different anywhere you play. So I'm just gonna hit the deck soon and after I'm gonna jump into a private jet to Vegas and in the jet, I'll talk to you a little bit more and explain you specifically what's safe when playing home and how to avoid that. San Bernardino, we're here. Okay, so two shows on one night means we're catching a private jet ride now. Sammy, dude, this is your first time in a jet ever. How are you feeling? Pretty excited, man. It's a blessing. Thank you. Okay, so we're in the jet now, about to take off. And before we hit Vegas, I want to talk to you about how it is to play at home. It's basically your comfort zone where you're playing in. You are used to the sound, you're used to the setup. And the funny thing is, at home, there's no crowd. So who are you playing for? This is only you. So a lot of times, you know, uh, DJing is in late hours or in the early mornings. And whenever you play a set at home, you can do it at like 5 p.m. or after work or whatever. Any night of the day or every other week, I'm in a different environment. So I actually cannot get used to like a certain environment. It's very rare. So right now we're out to my Vegas show. Very excited. So it's the second show of the night. So we're just going to go straight through. And in the morning, I'm going to tell you more about how it is to actually play in clubs. Touchdown Las Vegas. I hope you realize by now that I only do this if I have two shows on one night and only out of the necessary. So um, although it looks pimp, I'm not that pimp. So 
it was a very early morning out and I couldn't record anything in the hotel room. So that's why I'm catching you right here at the Vegas airport right now. Yesterday was such a busy schedule. I could really feel the difference between playing in a club and playing at a festival. So for instance, one of my favorite tracks at the moment, Hervé Page, In Those Jeans. Which I've been playing on repeat was a tricky one to drop and especially at the festival it's more of like a an intimate type of track but you can instantly tell there's like a different sort of energy when listening to it at home and then playing it out in front of a big crowd so generally in clubs you play for a smaller type of crowd so maximum of like a thousand people usually the crowd is a little bit older than the festivals as well and you'll be facing the crowd directly, so you're really close to the people. In a club you play generally longer sets. I do about two hours, one and a half hour at the time. And the environment is darker as well. The sound in the club is loud and direct, but compared to your living room or to your studio, it's way, way louder than you're actually used to. And that might be a little bit overwhelming for the first time. And then the other thing is with clubs, usually you play late. It's late hours, sometimes you're tired and then you still need to play. And this can have an influence on the quality of your set. So right now we're flying out to Atlantic City, New Jersey, where I'll be playing a club again next. So good to be back in Atlantic City. This hotel room is amazing, so huge. And these last two days have been a little bit crazy. I just felt like I've been sitting on planes the whole day. But here I am, and I'm ready to tell you a little bit how I anticipated all of this, getting from my bedroom into a club or into a radio studio or onto a festival. Early on, I already noticed that it was a totally different experience coming from your bedroom into a club because the setup is so different than the one at your house. I would purposely switch setups switch mixers, uh, put the turntables wider from each other, changed my speakers to not get used to anything really. Sometimes I would practice sets with the volume really loud and sometimes I would practice the sets with the volume really low. Each and every night I would record a set of an hour long and then in the morning I would listen to it back and then listen where the good combos were and then listen for my mistakes as well and try to learn from those. And so before the weekend, I had about seven sets with that, that were stacked with like really cool combinations. And in the clubs, I would try and remember those combinations. Okay, time now for a workout in this lovely hotel room. So this is Rob Stoddard's uh, friend. He's about to work me out. He's a personal trainer. I can't wait. Let's go. Got some handstand push-ups. All right, now we got some V sit-ups. Yep, after this, we got a little bit of Spider-Man planks with a push-up. Good. Straight after, I'm going to have some food with the crew, and I think I'll be able to squeeze in just a 15-minute nap before the show. And after my show, I will tell you all about what you need to keep in mind when playing at a festival. So, although I played here before, I have no clue what to expect. Let's just see. Let's just go in and see. Some one-eyed vlogging here. It still baffles me that after all these years of touring that I need to be up earlier than people go to work usually. It's only been a three-hour sleep today. I'm taking you out to a beach festival in Tampa today. Well, Justin, why aren't you sitting over there? Because I'm gonna uh, sleep for a minute. Bug out woke me up with all his snoring. Wait, he was in your room? He was in my room. <laughs> okay. Well, have a good sleep. Still. Double bed, though. Double bed. Double bed. Double bed. <laughs> Arrived in sunny Tampa. Well, it's not really sunny, but it's super hot. I'm really sweating in this shirt right now. I am here to play at a beach festival today. So that's something different as well. But it gives me a good excuse to tell you about, and I think a lot of you are interested in this, at playing festivals. What do you need to keep in mind? So at festivals, you usually play outdoors can be sunny out and uh, this is a tricky one because when it's sunny you can't actually see what's on the decks and a lot of time you'll be playing for a younger crowd maybe even a crowd that has never been ever been to a festival before or even a crowd that has never ever heard you play before 
The set times are always short at festivals, usually just an hour and uh, with like a DJ intro or with an intro of a festival, uh, just 55 minutes. So it's very short to really try and play what you want to play. The sound at festivals can be a little bit strange as well because everything is open air. One of the toughest things for me at festivals is trying to grab the crowd. Like the interaction with the crowd at festivals is very tough because the crowd is usually very far away and you're playing to a really big audience. I mean, festival stages can vary from from 10,000 to like 30,000 people. Needless to say, I'm ready to rock this festival today, right here and right now. And after the show, I'll give you the five main pointers to keep in mind when you come out of your bedroom and try and play clubs and festivals. And here we go, fourth and last show of the weekend. Traveling in style though, look at this. What? I really had a great time in Tampa and it was good to be back because I've been playing this venue for a while now and I was so happy that people came out and they went crazy. So before I give you my five pointers, make sure to like this vlog and subscribe to it because there's so much more on the way and I'll have some valuable content for you and maybe you can learn some stuff here. Okay, number five, to keep in mind, the light will always be different. So especially when playing in clubs, you might just be playing in the dark. Is it ever dark in your bedroom? You might want to try that out. Number four, when you DJ professionally, you will always play at weird hours. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night, but sometimes it may be, if you're in another country or continent, it may be the jet lag as well. To practice, you might just want to wake up in the middle of the night and see what it feels like. Number three, the vibe and the setup will always be different. So you are used to your setup at home, in a club or in a festival, or even the next day and the day after, it may vary. The sound will be different, the decks will be sl slightly tilted, Sometimes you play and the decks will hop a little bit because of the bass and every situation is different. You might want to anticipate on that. Number two, I know some of you have really good sound in your studio, but the sound at clubs and festivals is always super overwhelming. So the bass is often that much you can feel it going through your whole body. So try and play and practice uh, like on a loud sound system or something and you will see the experience is totally different. But the number one main reason you need to keep in mind, and a lot of you might say, duh, but it's true, there is no crowd in your bedroom. So as soon as you step out your bedroom, there is a crowd, and with that crowd, you'll need to keep in mind what keeps them dancing, and not only you. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope you learned something from it. Next week, I have something interesting for you as well. If you like vlogging, I will show you how I exactly edit my vlogs and make it to what it is that you see right here. Make sure to catch me here next week on the true story and the real life. Until then, L's up, rave safely, and salute.